Hey everybody, it's Andy from SA Survival. I'm just going to do that review that I promised that I was going to do a long time ago about the overquilt that I use or the, uh, the, the sleeping bag that I've converted. So I have two here. This is a single on its own and this is the double. I did just weigh them. This one comes in at eight pounds. Like I said, it's not something that you can uh, take in a backpack. Well, you could, but you gotta be strong. Uh, and this one obviously is half the weight, that's four pounds, and it's in a shrink sack as well. So I'll undo this in a minute. Uh, but for now, it has these two straps on the very end, and you can just tie it tightly together. So if I undo these, you can see that it unrolls just like a conventional sleeping bag. There is a zipper right here there's two of them because i got the two sleeping bags together and like i said they are strapped together but i don't do them up when i say strapped together there's hoops on one end and loops on the other and you just go along the sleeping bag on the front and on the back and you just loop them together and what i did at the very top just to stop it from coming apart is i just got some string rope um, and I just bound the two loops on both sleeping bags together. When I get in it, I actually turn the sleeping bag so the foot box is 90 degrees up and down and not 90 degrees horizontal. And that becomes my foot box. So when I'm lying there, my feet are actually sitting up like this. They're in the box, really, really comfortable. The sleeping bag then is draped over me as a duvet. Now I'll show you the zipper again in a minute and this zip does not go all the way down. So if we make it so I'm climbing into it, the zipper zips about, I don't know, just over half the, the length from the head and then sort of from the knee down it's stitched solid. So this does not come undone. And that's why it works out to be a really good bag to actually jump into and use as an over quilt. Now, at the temperatures that we're at anywhere between seven degrees, which was last weekend, and I've been down to minus 15 during the winter so far, these two sleeping bags are made of down. They are surplus sleeping bags from the military, and you can pick them up from a surplus store if you can find one. They do join together, they're guaranteed brand new, down to minus 40, and you can get a uh, flannel liner that goes inside of them. I do not have it, it just becomes a bit more bulky and I didn't really like having it in there. So with my thermals on, and if I'm inside of this thing, beautifully warm. Now obviously it's a fair few years old from a surplus store, it will depreciate some of its down. As you can see every now and then there's a few feathers popping out. Um, but I would say it's probably, I don't know, 70% of its uh, fill is still in there and it still kept me lovely and warm. So that is a quick review on the two sleeping bags that I do and rather than me undo them, what I'm going to do is quickly get the single out and just show you. Again, four pounds in weight. Obviously it's been compressed for a little while, but it will fluff up once you start getting into it. Now, open on its own, it's just a single sleeping bag, the zippers are say exactly the same. These are those loops that I was showing you. So this is an inner sleeping bag, okay? And there's the toggles on the inside of this for the flannel liner that goes inside of it. It also has loops on the very end, so when you roll this all up, it can actually be compressed on its own. But I just throw it in a stuff sack and it helps that way. So, I know you can't see it's on the floor. I'm 5'9", it's around six feet. It does not come with a sewn on hood, which is one of the nice things that I liked about this because I've tried doing it with a sleeping bag and you have the hood on one side of you if you turn it so the zipper is underneath of you. The thing about this is you can see that it's gathered, the tape has been stitched. I was thinking about cutting this and making it loose, 
But this works out really well because when it's over me, and I'll see if I can simulate it. I've just got this wrapped around my shoulders and where those gathered ends are, they hook my shoulders and it just keeps the sleeping bag right on top of me. Lovely and warm and at the back with an overquilt, you just sort of tuck it in behind you and from there, it sort of keeps your back warm. I don't zip it up, I do leave it loose because I do have the Hammock Gear Incubator 20 underneath of me keeping me warm and that's 20 degrees Fahrenheit, so around minus seven degrees. If you do get really cold and you've only taken one sleeping bag out with you, the bonus is you can zip it all up and you've got yourself a sleeping bag. So I haven't needed to do that and with two of these together, which is one kit that you can buy from the surplus store, it's a great innovation I think for, I want to say car camping because um, this one's my daughter's. She has carried it on her back with a rucksack. I do have a synthetic uh, North Face sleeping bag, which I carry if I'm gonna go on the ground, but nowadays I'm in my hammock. And as you saw last weekend, I'm trying to do a little bit more with the cod, get outside, a bit more four by fouring, and get out of the urban areas and go see some different areas. So I'm traveling 40, 50 kilometers up into valleys with my vehicle where it's accessible. So these things work really well. Um, and also, if there's a couple of you going out, like my partner and me, um, we both have one of these each, or if I go out on my own, I've now got two. So that's my very quick overview of uh, the overquilt that I use, and uh, I hope you appreciated this. If you like it, please subscribe or follow us throughout the year. Thank you very much, and keep on camping.